Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today for another stumble through. Today we are going to be doing the infamously arduous task of deploying OpenShift. It'll be a single node though, so don't worry. It's nothing too complicated. We're just going to deploy this into a virtual machine. That way we can develop on OpenShift locally maybe. Or, you know, that take away the steps of deploying a large cluster just to do some development work. So what we'll be doing is just basically setting up a virtual machine, subscribing to the correct repositories and subscriptions needed, cloning down the repo and running script. Not too bad, right? So couple of things to note is that you will need a machine with two block devices. The second one is unused. We will use that for Docker storage though. You'll subscribe on your own and from there it's kind of an interactive little bit. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is by the way based on one of the architects at Red Hat, Grant Shipley's work. So let's go ahead and make a new virtual machine. I'm using VMware workstation just locally on my system. You could use whatever hypervisor you'd like. Now, I like to select all install the OS later just because if you select the disk, VMware tries to get a little smart or a little too smart for its own good and tries to figure out a bunch of stuff for you. So, just do that in a moment. We're installing RHEL 7. Let's call this OCP. I'm running a Threadripper system so I can give it a little extra juice. Give it however many processors as you like. I'm going to give this also 16 gigs of RAM. There we go. It would be suggested to use bridge networking, especially if you're going to route from the external internet through your router at home or at your lab into this OpenShift node. I'm actually going to do something a little differently for the networking in a moment, but use bridge traditionally, not if it's just local development. Go ahead and click next, skip through this and that in case you need to take care of anything special, we'll create a new hard disk. So this first hard disk is just where the operating system is installed. Let's give it about 50 gigs. That'll cover it. Create the VMDK and go ahead and click finish. So one thing that we'll need to do now is add a secondary hard disk. This is where Docker will create persistent volumes. Create a new virtual disk. This one I'll give a little extra space. So we'll look at 100 gigs and just whatever specify disk file you like the file name. All right, for me, I'm going to select this and put it into one of my bridge networks. This is something that you probably won't have to do. Modify the network bit right here. This is just for my local lab. All right, but everyone does need a secondary hard disk. I'm going to go ahead and attach the rel server ISO. We're using 7.5 in this instance. And let's power this sucker on. Click into the virtual machine, go up. We're not going to test the media. This warning is only there for my system because I'm running a little bit newer AMD Threadripper uh, processor. So the certification isn't quite there yet. It should be coming in RHEL 8, though, from what I hear, which is great hasn't caused me any sort of issues from what I can tell. I've spun up a bunch of RHEL systems. Uh, just a certification warning. All right, I'm using the English keyboard and speaking the English language, so we'll set that localization setting. So next, what we we'll want to do is scroll down 
the network is traditionally disabled by default. So before we enable it, I'm also going to give this a name. So OCP Kiva Lab. This is just my internal lab that's served here. Turn it on. I'm pulling in an IP. Great. All right. So now we have network access. Let's set the time and set it to network time. Next, we'll come down here. You'll notice if you've done this correctly so far, you've got two disks available. Your operating systems disk, and then the one we'll be using for Docker storage. I'll just select the single one first, and I will configure partitioning just because I want a more flat partition. And hey, it actually just dumps everything into the root partition anyway. So that's great, that's exactly what we want accept the changes. Minimal install for right now and go ahead and begin. Set your root password. Create a secondary user. I'll add this to the sudoers. And just give it a moment to install. Really well placed to open shift add in the installer. Really well placed. All right, now we're actually done. Within two or three minutes, let's go ahead and reboot. Again, that nasty warning. But it's all right. All right, let's go ahead and log in as root because that's obviously the responsible thing to do. Now that we have logged in, this is a rail system. One of the first things you got to do is set your subscriptions. registered yeah I remember my password let's go ahead and attach the pool so now I'm attaching an OpenShift subscription to this machine this is available from the Red Hat customer portal under your subscriptions you'll find your pool subscription ID available and if you've successfully attached you'll grab subscription for Red Hat OpenShift great let's go ahead and clear out everything next we're going to install a few things and update a couple things in reverse so let's go ahead and run a quick update and we'll also install Git and Nano, just because I'm a Nano fan, whatever. So this will take a moment as it refreshes the repositories, pulls in these new packages, and updates the basics for what we have right now before we jump into installing a bunch of other stuff. And we're back. All right, so now we've subscribed, updated base, and installed at least Git. 
what we need to do now is grab this repo. All we have to do is get clone. Very quick, not too heavy of a repo. Something to make mention of here is that we can fdisk list and show that we have that 100-ish gig block available at dev sdb, the secondary block device that we set up that is unused by our operating system. So that's something that we'll need in the next steps, that dev sdb. Remember that. Go ahead and clear out of this before we actually proceed what we'll want to do is actually reboot odds are during our update we grab the new kernel let's go ahead and use it probably some nice little bits in there that we want yep there's a new kernel Go ahead and log back into the root again because we haven't learned anything. Let's change into the install rel directory. Here we've got a couple of files, so this inventory file is going to be used to install OpenShift, and it, OpenShift is installed with Ansible. So if we roll into this inventory file, we can see a couple of templated bits here. IP is templated, eorg user, eorg password, this, that, and the other. Now you could use Jinja2 and use an Ansible script for this as well, but this is wrapped in a bash script just for simplicity's sake. Now the uh, inventory file right now as it is is set up for a single node, all inclusive. If you wanted to break that inventory file out, you could, but you'd also have to do a couple other steps in order to set up those individual hosts. Similar to what we're doing here. Let's jump into the install OpenShift file. This is where we'll actually be running the installer, which is pretty much wrapping the Ansible install script for the OpenShift deployer before doing a couple of prerequisite work bits and then setting the cluster admin, some percent volumes. This is actually not too important because it's all interactive. So we can actually just jump right into here. Is your system registered and attach the correct pool with an available secondary block device? Yes. Domain to use. I'm going to use ocp.chemo.lab. Now this 99. blah blah blah. That's my public IP, but with zip.io, that's kind of a quick uh, DNS wildcard that just points right back to whatever IP you give it, including internal IPs, which is kind of useful for testing local development projects. But I've got internally routed domains here. The username we're going to use root. We're going to post production block that password. OpenShift version is 3.11. The IP of the machine currently running. This will be inserted into the inventory file as we saw earlier. API port. Just roll that at 8443. Let's go ahead and type in your Red Hat network username and your password. Some more post production editing magic. Secondary block device. It defaults to dev sdb, just in case you forgot it, but we listed it from the disks earlier, so we know that to still be true here. So dev sdb, let's go ahead and use it. And now basically it's going to download all the packages needed 
it's set up in a specific order. Um, and otherwise, install OpenShift locally. This will take probably about 30 minutes, so we'll just let this kind of roll here for a minute. All right, and yeah, about well, 35, 40 minutes. And we've got no shift server supposedly. Login successful, it seems to be running at this address. So hopefully enough, we can actually scoot on over to it. Let's open up console.ocp.q.lab. 8443, we'll have to specify HTTPS. Looks like we are routing there. All right. And there we have it. We got ourselves a little OpenShift server. So hopefully that was helpful. Something to show you how you can quickly get up and started with OpenShift enterprise in a single node fashion something just quickly develop with without having to deploy a whole cluster thank you again for watching the stumble through and till next time thank you for your time and thank you for stopping by